So have you seen this bass before? Mm -mm. Um, it's uh, Mike Padula. It's uh, made up in Massachusetts. There, it was a furniture manufacturing family, and then one of the sons said, "You know, hey, yo, I know how we can make more money with that maple than with chairs." He makes a really nice product. Um, this one's been around a while. You can tell it's kind of beat up, also because the tuners say Schaller, West Germany. Wow. Yeah, which which is cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I thought many times to change these out for a lighter set of tuners to improve the balance, but nah. You like the antique? I just like that it says West Germany on it, and you know, it's a little reminder that, well. That happened? Yeah, that that happened and there's some hard times associated with it. Yeah. I was just a toddler. Uh, my dad played music every day after work. Um, he was a pretty bright guy, and uh, when he'd come home from uh, no such agency, he played the piano. I mean, constantly. So, I mean, some of my first memories are, are sitting around the piano, and we'd sing songs, or he'd sing songs to us. And I remember being turned loose at four or five years old. Go learn, you know, sit down and learn that Mozart, learn that Mendelssohn. Uh, Schumann, he, he didn't really, he wasn't pushy about it, but it was always there. So, you know, if you were bored, there was always the piano. So, yeah, I, I gotta admit that was a, a big influence because my dad had it, uh, such a cool hobby. He obviously got a lot of enjoyment out of it um, without necessarily thinking about trying to be a star or anything like that. It was just a, along with athletics and, and literature, it's just something that everybody did in the previous generation. Music was something you made yourself at home. So ladies and gentlemen, the Beatles! That's it was seeing John Lennon, uh, the whole, the Beatles, but seeing John Lennon in particular on the Ed Sullivan show and going, what is that? What's he doing? That looks like fun. There, there was just something uh, graceful and uninhibited about him and his rhythm guitar. So I'm going to ask you and Aiden to play chords together, you know, nice and loud. Um, and I'm going to deliberately put in some non-chord tones. I'm generally going to use the approved non-chord tones from classical music, which is uh, the neighbor note. Go next door, come right back. Oh, okay. Neighbor note. The passing note. I went from one, two, three. The two doesn't fit, but the three does. That's a passing note. Like he did... Push the string. Oh, bending strings is what makes life worth living. Uh, no, I love bending strings. Um, it sounds a little bit more like a singer. I'm able to play more in tune that way. Um, it's just a fun thing to do. What are some of the things you like and don't like about teaching music? Well, um, okay, there's a lot of things I like about it, or I would not have persisted. There certainly ain't much money in it. Um, but it's the, the repetition of that moment when a student crosses over from being annoyed or irritated, disinterested, to you see that light of curiosity in their eyes. And they might be looking at a piece of music or listening to something, and there's that, oh, what's this? Um, you know, that's worth more than money. Do you remember the first gig you played? Let's see, there's a Methodist church off of Randolph Road, just west of New Hampshire. And I went over there with Billy Brown and some other guys. Um, they were all a little older than me, but um, uh, by then, I knew enough about music that I could fit in with, with older folks. So we played in this church basement for some dance. Do you remember how it went? Ha! <laughs> uh, I'm going to qu quote a friend of mine. He's fond of saying, uh, you know, we had some nice moments. Mm -hmm. So instead of beating yourself up for the, the little things that went wrong, uh, you focus on having some, you know, really exciting 
uh, moments scattered throughout the, the event. So yeah, there were some cool moments, and I always loved, uh, I always liked playing in bands more than playing by myself, partly because there's, there's an element of uh, improvisation there, and there's nothing like being there in a band, and you change your part, and hearing somebody next to you change theirs and reaction to it. Practice that for 40, 50 years, and you get something really cool. So. Yeah, I was actually playing up at Music and Arts corporate headquarters, mm -hmm. which is kind of nice. We've done a couple of those. Good to see old friends and stuff. So, oh yeah, so you're playing in a warehouse. You got to get all the crud off your cables. There's something about cable dirt that's really insidious. Pancakes. Sometimes you're content to hear Frankie Valley or something like that in the background. Uh, so background music is, I would say right now, is the biggest purpose for music. It really can serve to uh, unite people who have no other common interests. You can have people with ve vastly different lives share a connection through music. I have a long history of putting people to sleep with my classical guitar. It's kind of a joke in the family, but uh, I'd like to take some credit for that. You were asking about the purposes of music, and this relates directly to that. Uh, if you can get some people who are very stressed to calm down, even if it results directly in a nap, it's still a, a really useful service in an age of high anxiety. That's a wonderful thing, and I, I like being a part of that. I also uh, like to encourage people to relate music to other areas of their lives, literature and art, because it's all about relationships you know, between the bridge and the coda uh, and between people. I think it's really important for people to have a hobby, and, and music can be a really fulfilling one. It's kind of a bottomless pit. If you've got curiosity, um, you can easily spend a lifetime studying it and barely touch the surface. It, go it goes back to your first question, what was my first exposure to music? Um, my dad and his hobby, um, that's really still the top of the list. You know, I do all these things to try to make a living with music, but I'm also very selfish about it. It's still a hobby. It's still what I'm going to do if... You know, somebody's want to get together and have some pizza. It's like, well, that's sight read, man. Yeah, it, it's great fun. I've almost reached my heavenly home. My spirit loudly sing. Behold the holy ones, they come. I hear the sound of wings. Oh, come, angel band, come and around me stand. Oh, bear me away on your snow white wings to my.